it, king and queen of the Middle Kingdom, this ninth day of September, Anno Societatis 58, in their shire of Swordcliffe. Their Majesties call forward any members of the Order of Chivalry who would swear their fealty at this time. I hereby swear fealty and do homage to the crown of the Middle Kingdoms, to whoever be a good knight and true, reverend and generous, shield of the weak, obedient to my liege lord, foremost in battle, courteous at all times, champion of the right and the good. Thus swear I, Robert Sergeant Fred this, this do we hear, you shall never forget, your fail to... Oh, right. <laughs> 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 to be Yay. English lords, rewarding fealty with love, valor with, with honor, <laughs> oath-breaking <laughs> with vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> this here opens the court of the barony of Carrickbach. Their excellencies call forth, Mistress Epona. The borders of Carrick Bond are vast, but her heart is even broader. Thus, we maintain an embassy for outreach to those friends of Carrick Bond in distant land. Today, we reaffirm the right of our embassy and our ambassadors to act on behalf of Carrick Bond in these locations of our interest. To our beloved Dowager Baroness Excellency Epona and Mistress Chadwiga, we charge the powers and rights of ambassadorship to make new officers in the embassy to speak on our behalf and to carry the spirit Carrick Bond, where thou wilt. And there is a certificate which says, Carte Blanche, the bearer of this letter, shall be gifted the right to evermore do as thou wilt. The ambassadors of Perry Bond. Huzzah! <laughs> Their excellencies call forth Baron Honda. Your people loved you in your service. And we thank you entirely for your time. You have never asked for anything but for one thing. There was one item that Baron Honda ever asked for, and that was... No, no, no. No, no. This is the one thing. You wanted a scroll done entirely in... Or rather, in you stated that you felt our artisans were good enough, that they could even do amazing things in crayon. <laughs> not an award, it does come with text, in, and so it reads, ask and ye shall receive. <laughs> <laughs> this day, the 9th of September, Anno Societatis 58. Eight. <laughs> Baron Honda and his most excellent scroll from Artisans of Crayola. <laughs> Here closes the court of the Excellencies of Karakbot. <coughs> Their Majesties call forth Her Ladyship Moonwin Ikinet called Strawberry, Pierre Gangen de Vaucrosson, Captain Yalmar, Warder Roland de Soleil, Forrester Rymar Erickson, Her Ladyship Hugh Stormbringer, and the Honorable Lady Melina Amadil to report on today's activities. So we had a large mass derby today. Um, the theme was uh, pirate because X marks the spot and this is the tenth Baroness Rose. And in the true spirit, people just had to convince me that what they were donating had something to do with pirate. We had one winner, without a doubt, but the real winner is the kingdom. Um, after the court, the entrance.
patrons will come over there so that they all get to pick one item each. And then Her Majesty has asked that we pass on the largesse to the barons and baronesses of the, the kingdom, of the region, and also to send some of it forward to their highnesses, heirs. Thank you. Um, so, and then I spoke to the baron and baronesses, and they have agreed that they would like to start sharing immediately with the staff of this event and the teachers. So after court, if anyone who is staff and teachers would come over there to get to pick something, and then the remainder items will go to the respective baronies. So thank you to everybody, and thank you very much for letting us bring <laughs> Competition, the Bard of the Midlands competition, um, which was a, an amazing competition. In all honesty, um, it was the best competition we have had yet. Um, so I'm going to name off all the performers. Uh, if you can come to me after court, I've got some um, some largesse for you as well. Um, and uh, uh, then if if the, the winner can come up, and I will sash that winner. Um, so the performers were Piero Petroplus, De Marie La Fauconnier, Baron Colbard from Meridies, Melanie de la Tour. Our tie for second place was John Osprey and the Honorable Lady uh, Siobhan on Ennek of Knacht. And then our winner. Uh, with an amazing song called My First Event that everybody was so moved by that they joined in, uh, very much encompassing the theme of endings and new beginnings chosen by Her Majesty, thank you very much, is Gwendolyn Fergluel. that was supposed to uh, actually be uh, started years ago. So if you can come up here, right now, and just trim here. <laughs> All right, I don't see her. All right, so if Gwendolyn can come up later, I will give her her sash and things. And the rest of you just come and grab me after court. Thank you.
regalia from the office. This is the prize for the roll. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Today we held our Harvard Regional Championships. Uh, we had several excellent entrants. Um, the victor for today was Alexa Kratis. So for the next year, uh, passed by Sir Garrick, who carried the Midlands Regional Shield. Today we had activities on the rapier field as well. Uh, we held a dice tournament, the two winners of which were uh, Corsaro Hale, you can stand. And then we had a youth rapier winner, uh, Jade the Jester, you can also stand. We also held, we also held the Midlands Regional Rapier Championship. And our victor, who will receive this match, was Magnus Gandhi. Put <laughs> sash for a year, bring it back next year. Try this with the challenge worthy of the next champion. or ancient poker work salon. We had at least 15 people sit and burn their first attempts at wood burning. And during this, we had a raffle that was provided by the Honorable Lord David of Lockmore for a beginner's wood burning kit. So if those of you who put your tickets in for in the skull for your chance to win, please get out your tickets now so we can get out and watch you. It is two, eight, one, seven. Seven, two, one. Your Majesties would like to call into court Liam Von Metten, 
Let it be known to all that we and Louis came by right of arms of the Middle Kingdom, and Sire, most gracious Queen of all War and Song, having come to recognize the good service and contributions of our subject, Leon von Mutton, especially for service to our Barony of Ellington, do therefore wish to confer upon them an award of arms. <laughs>
and the craft of green, and facilitate others doing so. Anne, who has shown qualities of noblesse, courage, generosity, franchise, honor, truth, justice, mercy, largesse, and more. As the hero must, Anne has spent her vigil in contemplation, reflecting on her deeds and her future. And now we come to the point of ending one chapter and beginning another in a way that only your majesties may. And therefore, I would beg a boon that you elevate that you elevate Ban Baron Al that you elevate Baroness Anne Mulligan to the order of the world. Baroness Anne, present yourself before their majesties. Stand aside and make way for Baroness Anne of Sternfeld Barony in the book of busy moral let her name <laughs> be written today. Print it boldly in what letters stamp for fame or etch or engrave. Just so long as it is recorded, the mouse that roars was Laurel today. <laughs> and assembled nobles. I, Duke Guler, Knight of the Society, Master of the Laurel and of the Pelican, do send words to your court on behalf of Anne Mulligan, vigilant to the Order of the Laurel. I first met Anne when she moved to the kingdom and began to display her art at your Tournament of the Arts. Her skills continued show, to show true prowess at her art, which she taught freely, and her skill continued to grow. Over the several years that followed, she continued to find new ways to challenge herself in printmaking and its research. She took criticism and praise equally well as she developed her own style and methods. Of this, I am quite sure, since I gave liberal doses of both. <laughs> to help her on her path. Anne Mulligan has shown herself to be the very model of courtesy and chivalry as she goes about her art. She is kind and open to those she teaches spending time to answer every question, no matter how small, and acts in virtue and courtesy when she gives up herself for demos, classes, and for her kingdom. Anne's work and talent make me work a little harder to be a better artisan, and I can think of no higher praise. Your Majesties, I commend Anne Mulligan to you as being a true worthy of this realm, and look forward to her addition into the Order of the Laurel. Yours in service, There are pelican to speak of Anne's service. Thank you, Matthew. I bring words of Dame Maggie McGee. She writes, Your Majesties, I am Dame Maggie McGee, 
order of the Pelican, and I would speak to you today with the spirit of service. For many years, I have been friends with this wonderful lady. I have watched her service to her barony, region, and kingdom with a smile on her face and in her heart. She currently serves as the Baroness of Sternfeld, offering warmth and leadership to her people. This job can be quite challenging, but she performs the role with grace and care. No task is too large or too small to receive her help. This is indeed what service is all about. She is my peer, and I commend her to your majesty with all my heart. Your Ambassador of Defense, to speak of Anne's courage. Where is your majesty? I bring the words of another whose responsibilities I've kept in some of the today. Unto their Mediterranean majesties, sends Peter Brown von Bremen, premier of your order of defense, his most humble greeting. May this day shine upon your majesties and bring you such joy as your invitation to Her Excellency Anne Mulligan brings to me and to her barony of Sternfeld. The Order of Defense speaks often of the structure of peers at their elevation. Often this is shown through the seemingly effortless labors of art, service, or strength of honor. Baroness Anne has shown this virtue in her art as your world will attest. This is now well known. She also shows this virtue in her personal grace and kindness. In the face of challenges and adversity, many years past, she showed me her work as I was testing the depths of judging a regional arts and sciences. As a new and somewhat interesting fellowship, I asked her foolish and useless questions about her copper and grape fruit She received my words with an uncommon understanding and answered me back with a wisdom and willingness to share that I have rarely found in a teacher of any arts or skill. Not only this, but disappointment or frustration she truly must have felt at my fumbled inquiries. Her grace and aplomb seemed natural and effortless as a well-timed blow when a timely counsel lay widespread. Your Majesty, Baroness Anne's seemingly effortless grace and kindness perfectly complements her art and show her to be in every way my fear, and I commend you to her. I commend her to you in all ways. Since this ninth day of September from the heart of the kingdom of North Shield, I your servant, there are future crowds on the government, and the government, and the government. Is there a member of the populace to speak in the answer to Hi, there is. My name is Lady Tula. I was formerly of Sternfeld. I have recently moved to Illigen, but still, I consider Sternfeld part of my home. Anne is part of my home. She is a person that will welcome you, that will Make sure that you have the, the necessities that you need. She's a person who cares about people and cares about the SCA and the things that we do. She is my friend, and I'm very lucky to have her. And I commend her to you. Master Domingo. Many years ago, you came to me at a practice, screwed up your courage and said, I want to be your cadet. And I looked you in the eye and said, no. And you looked so dejected. I told you instead that I wanted you as an apprentice first. I saw that art in your eye then. I still see it today. I will gladly accept you as a sister royal, but I must take this back. Your Majesty, she is no longer a student. She is hers to deal with as a member of your colleagues. Thank you. Summon our most loyal companions of the Order of the Laurel. Companions of the Laurel, present yourselves before their majesty. Noble lords and ladies, is it your opinion that Anne Mulligan is worthy of elevation into the Order of the Laurel? Aye. And, right mindful of your service to the society, and responsive to the wishes of your peers, we are resolved to create you a companion of the Laurel. As the laurel wreath has ever stood for excellence, so do we give it to you as the symbol of the mastery of your art. 
Therefore, will you, Anne, give us your word to continue to fulfill the requirements set forth for the governance of this order as you most surely have till now? I will. Will you increase your labors nobly, increase your talents as befits one of your rank, and seek to disseminate your talents and abilities throughout the society? I will. Do you promise to train any dependents you may have to do likewise? Are there any values? <laughs> Majesty, this is one of my personal medallions, and as I fought side by side with her, one of my knights changed to spend this medallion. Your Majesties, there are two others that did not make it today, one from Master Llewellyn of uh, Sternfeld, and another from Duchess uh, Wendover Claymore of Edenville, which is on its way. This is from Bamfane, Mistress Maeve of uh, yes. Barony Monstonitris in Edenville that she has worn for many years and she has sent this to him as well. Take from our hands these symbols of nobility and tokens of our esteem. Wear them proudly so that all may recognize your service as we have acknowledged it this day. Is there a coat? There is, Your Majesty. This coat was made by Clarence Solicity, Mistress Laura and Bulletin. Wear this coat as an outward token of your new station. Is there a veil? There is, Your Majesty's. This was actually made and printed by Anne's own hand. Wear this veil as a symbol of your excellence. Now swear your oath of fealty to the ground. Anne, student of art, who learns and grows. Anne, 
mentor and teacher who leads by example and shares her glad heart with all who seek her knowledge and skill. We add to the final page of volume one, wherein a wreath of laurel leaves crowns her noble brow. Volume two shall be magnificent. <laughs> in consideration of the excellence and expertise in the arts and sciences displayed by Ann Mulligan, most especially in the arts of paper, block printing, and decorative stamps, and the generosity of spirit with which she has shared these with our society, we are minded to create her a companion of the Order of the Laurel, to be in all places numbered a peer of our realm, with all the rights, privileges, insignia, precedents, and responsibilities there to appertain. For Master Anne, huzzah! This court calls forward Emmanuel von Brandenburg. One and all shall know that we, Louis and Side, King and Queen of the Midrome, send heartfelt greetings. Know that it is one of the pleasures of the crown to recognize individuals who exhibit great courtesy, grace, and honor to people of all ranks, and who exemplify what it means to be the embodiment of the dream. Therefore, we are hereby minded to make unto Emmanuel von Brandenburg an award of the sapphire. For Emmanuel, huzzah! This court calls forward Alistair Garibald. It shall be known by all that we, Louis, king by right of arms and side, our queen, have witnessed the skills, knowledge, and service that Alistair Garibald has displayed in the discipline of rapier combat. And we're minded to make him a companion of our order of the Cavendish Knot. <laughs> Call for Stephanie of Dark Rivers or someone to accept for them at all times. Warriors have recognized and honored each other. And so, Scythe and Louis, Regina and Rex Mediterrane recognize and honor Stephanie of Dark River as a proven warrior in the art of rapier combat. By their hands and seals, we grant her admission into the virtuous order of the Cavendish Knot. For Lady Stephanie, Draco! Yes. And the scenes call for Mistress Arianne of Oshford, or someone to accept for her. Let it be known by all that we, Louis, king by right of arms of the Middle Kingdom, and our cherished queen, time do recognize the exemplary service that Ariane Lenore of Ashford hath freely given to the barony of Ariton and to the Middle Kingdom. We are pleased to bestow upon her the award of the Purple Fret. For Mistress Ariane, huzzah! Majesty's call forth, Magnus, Rauda, Gander. Here be writ the words of Side, Queen, and Patroness of the, the uh, Divers Arts, having heard much to please us of the preeminent talent and skill in cooking. We, with Louis, our king, are minded to create Magnus, Rauda, uh, Gander, a companion of our Order of the Willow. For Lord Magnus! Huzzah! <laughs> the crown calls forward Kayla Stormbringer, the dubious lady. <laughs> Sorry. 
Dubious. Dubious and honorable. <laughs> Unto all gentles and nobles to whom our presence comes, know that we, Sai, Queen of the Middle Kingdom, and Louis our King, right mindful of the high esteem in which he and the storm drinking is held by our, I was told, <laughs> is held by our kingdom and ourselves, and in acknowledgement of her enduring support and encouragement of bardic enjoyment, are pleased to show them this sign of the Queen's favor, to wit, we bestow upon them the award of the Doe's Grace. <laughs> Or the dubiously honorable lady, he the storm breaker. <laughs> the court calls into court Jillian Durham. See, hear, read, and know that we, Louis, King by right of arms, and Sai of our inspiration, do send greetings to the whole of the Middle Kingdom. Mindful of the time, labor, and love that Jillian Durham hath given unto the barony of Carrigmon, we are minded to make her a companion of the Order of the Dragon's Heart. <laughs> For the Honorable Lady, Jillian Durham. situation and focuses on good, never harm. I, I read these words and they are David to a team. I, I can think of two personal moments with David that have always stood out in my mind. The first was when I 
came back after my brief pilgrimage, and I sat and took one of David's classes. And amongst it were people like me who've been around for four years, <laughs> five-digit membership members, and people who were at their first event ever. And it did not matter in David's eyes. He just saw people thirsting for knowledge and treated everyone He's ever come across, to my knowledge, as equals, and I love it. The second, which definitely strikes home on the things of good and not hard. I remember, it might have actually been the same event, where we were making scotch balls. <laughs> <laughs> scotch eggs. <laughs> That's different. Yeah, different. <laughs> well, afterwards, there is still scotch. <laughs> in the snow. In April. Outside. And while we, we did have some eyebrows, never once did we utter anything bad. We, we just did. And our, my beloved me standing there with an umbrella over the two of us. <laughs> These are memories that, I mean, let's be honest, that was a pretty weird situation that could have had rightful commentary. And for this, and essentially all the ages, he is my I could not believe it. If you remember the order of the chivalry, to speak to David's. There he is. I'm Suresh Lisa Sheetal. I'm of the Society, Master of the Pelican. And David joined me in Lot Morrow a great many years ago. And I did what I always do when someone joins a group. I say, what a bite like. <laughs> Many may remember that David did pick up a rapier and used it in a chivalric fashion of courtesy at all times. But I want to speak to a couple more personal things that may not directly relate to the chivalry. David, I have been racking my brain to verify this and not do any other research that I'm too lazy. You know, we are. But I do believe that David of Lockmorrow is the first person to start in Lockmorrow, continue in Lockmorrow, on the edge of our kingdom in a very small group, and become a peer of the realm while in Lockmorrow. <laughs> It didn't work on anything harder than that, it stuck, and here we are, and from the day, our days is the March of Lockmorrow through the Canada of Lockmorrow, this man has done it all, and he is indeed beyond my peer for all his work and everything, and I'm not even going to pretend to talk about his art. <laughs> founding baroness of the barony of Illiton. I've been around longer than more than half of this court were born. <laughs> and my late husband, Baron Rocky, and David had a number of projects for our barony that they worked very diligently make a huge box for porcelain dishes. And David very brilliantly burned the top of it to make it beautiful. He has shared his talent with so many people, and he is so generous of spirit. And coincidentally, he is my SCA grandson, 
and for that I am very proud. I know Barry Rocky would be very happy up above us, chuckling with joy that this is happening. And so do I. Thank you. <laughs> of the populace who would speak to David's generosity. Yes, Your Majesties. I am Melina Anakil, Order of the Evergreen, and I would be honored to speak for David. I first met David some years back at a small little event in our barony. It was just upstairs in a quiet little room, and David was teaching pyrography. And I always wanted to learn this, but never seen anyone ever teach it before. And David was such a sweet and humble teacher. He made the class so at comfortable ease that everyone had such a great time and left with this great passion. Over the years, David's become a great mentor and friend. He's taken on several students, myself included, across the known world, several of which have been recently made laurels themselves. As a mentor, David is always offering to encourage me to all come to him, and never looking for any self-recognition, but always looking for the betterment of those he, that come to him. Thanks to him, many of us have found our true passion in society, our true dream. I have watched him take steps back to let others, like myself, teach in his stead, and go to the same event and we'll find out that we're going to teach the same class. If he takes a step back so that someone else can take a step forward, has been recognized. I wept this morning when I found out David was being elevated because he is the true embodiment of here, Your Majesties, and I'm honored to know him. And I only hope my words can do him justice. Now we 
token of your new station. Is there a wreath? There is, Your Majesty. In addition to the pretty brat. <laughs> of your excellence. Now swear to your old fealty. <coughs> Here is for fealty and service to the crown of the Middle Kingdom. To ever enrich the crown with my talents and abilities. To promote the diverse arts and sciences. Continue the instruction of my dependents. The glory of the Middle Kingdom and to be worthy of the ring I wear. Thus, swear I, David Crockett. This, this do we hear, we shall, shall never forget, forget nor fail to reward that which is given. Guilty with love, with service with honor, oath breaking with vengeance. People of the Mid Realm, we present Master David of Lockmorrow, the newest companion of the world. I 
doing this today. Um, people are having fun, spending time with their friends. Um, it was a wonderful event. Thank you so much for the event staff for making it such a good event. Um, thank you for the cooking the barbecue last night, and there was a lot of food going around today. Yeah, and everyone that provided food for the various things today, be it Taste of the Midlands, one of the vigils, uh, the, later today, last night, the whole event has been very well fed. Well done. <laughs> okay. This has been one of, one of the most welcoming environments I feel like we've been in. Y'all do it different out here, and it's good. <laughs> so, from the bottom of our heart, thank you. Thank you to everyone that drove an extra long way to be out here and experience this with us. And uh, you're welcome, I guess, Midlands, for not having to drive as far this time. <laughs> Yeah. 